What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome to the Canes Insight Daily Podcast, powered by Anna Jar and Levine, Accident Attorneys. We are live here at the Miami Hurricane Team Store. We got people walking in, gearing up for this weekend, getting the absolute best in Miami Hurricanes apparel. Huge weekend, huge, a lot of things for the Miami Hurricane Team Store. You got, obviously, all the stuff that's here now. You can get on sale, first purchase, Insight 20, 20% off using that promo code. But also, Monday, we got a monster, monster event, six to seven in the team store. Two of the most popular athletes, forget the Canes, in South Florida, period. That is Cam Ward and Xavier Restrepo here Monday, six through seven. Come to the store, get your autographs, get your pictures, bring your kids. You do not, not want to miss this event at the Miami Hurricane Team Store right across campus next to the Thesis Hotel right there on South Dixie Highway. Again, it's Monday, six to seven right here in the Miami Hurricane Team Store. Plus, like I said, you use promo code inside 20, get 20% off, and you can this, uh, this promo for FSU Week Orange. Now you get a free poster with every purchase starting uh, Monday or so starting Sunday. So a lot of stuff going on with the Miami Hurricane Team Store. A lot of stuff going on with the University of Miami. Let's cut right to the big news. By the way, I would say Pete, hop in, but you're already right next I'm to here, me. I'm here, I'm so, here. Not much to hop in on, but let's talk about the big news of like you know 15 minutes ago. My wife texted me. She works for the university. Texted me the news. I posted on Twitter. Joe Echeverria, Miami official president. He had been acting as interim president. Now he is the official president of the University of Miami. Obviously, look, we got alums like yourself, um, people that are interested in university as a whole. But I think from the athletic standpoint, which most people listening to this podcast are focused on, I think this is a home run. This is a guy that was right there with Rudy Fernandez and hiring Mario Cristobal and spending more money on athletics broadly, which led to paying Cristobal top of the market, paying his assistants top of the market. You see the NIL, how much that's cooking. This has all been with Joe Echeverria, who really got you health up and running, is a former uh, CEO of Deloitte. This is someone that's non-academic coming from the business world. Um, you know, <laughs> Different opinions on how, how to help the university. I personally am for it. Uh, on the university side, but certainly from athletics, that perspective I think is needed as this becomes more of a professional operation. Yeah, a guy who really, I mean, he cares, D. I think you look at the track record of recent presidents at Miami and Donna Shalala did a great job elevating the academic status of the school. Julio Frank was a guy who was here for a few years, obviously. I, I just, I don't think he necessarily cared. I don't think he was holding back the athletic department necessarily. I just don't think he really understood the you know the 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 world of college athletics so to speak and you're getting a guy here who look not to say he has an, an athletic background right but he cares about this athletic program football program doing well he's a fan right that's step number one and it's not to say he's going to be making coaching hires and stuff like that that's still dan radicovic's job but to have someone who's fully on board with what you're trying to do and really take a step forward with, with a lot of things on the athletics side, which we've seen already the last, last couple of years, right? It's just, you know, I don't think there's going to be any crazy changes right now or anything like that, but he wants to see the program. He understands the importance of having a strong athletic side here in conjunction with university itself no question look this is someone who's coming from the real world right from the business world bottom lines you know i think sometimes universities don't really function in the real world just because of some of the financial things with the loans it's not the way that it works outside of the university context and certainly athletics they don't function in the real world because you have free labor have had free labor for 100 years you've been able to basically commit antitrust violations every year uh, now they're being held accountable for that so at least on the athletic side is being brought into the real world uh, a business so a guy like a cheveria who has that real world experience and has not grown up in this university bubble i think is going to be exactly the kind of leader you want for this new era because he's going to look at it from the real world perspective that's why you see private equity trying to come in to these universities and help their athletic departments because they know that these um you know, you know, this is this is not a, this has not been a normal industry that plays by the rules of everybody else. So when the rules start applying to them, you, you want someone who knows how to move in that highly competitive business world. Joe Echeverria is that, and I think um, you know from athletics, he's already proven that he cares a lot. I see him at practice all the time, wearing the suit and burning heat. 
Um, so he's all about business and all about the Canes and all about the Canes doing well. So I think this is a home run hire for the University of Miami. And I think it's going to, for people, you know, a lot of people listening are not alums. They just want the programs to be humming. I think from that perspective, you cannot ask for a better hire than Joe Echevarria, given what he's already shown in terms of where his priorities are, value the athletics uh, department and financially um, committing to it. We got to get him on the show, D. I think he'd be a, a great guest for us. Absolutely, no question about it. We'll we'll, we'll work on that. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot going on here. I also should mention another promotion, which you know you guys need to know about, which is No Fee Friday. You know, I'm, sounds like I'm selling something. This is really doing you guys a, a favor because I I know I'm using this promotion as well, which is today's Friday. Actually, Friday, no fee Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You can go buy tickets to Miami's home games, MiamiHurricanes.com. No fees. Use the official site, uh, and you will be able to avoid any kind of fees on your tickets for the next three home games. So if you're going to buy tickets to those games, there's no better way to get get that done than uh, taking advantage of this No Fee Friday promotion that runs through Sunday. But, uh, yeah, a uh, lot going on here. Louisville matchup, Pete. You're going to be talking to – Mark Ennis, yeah. Right. So we're going to be breaking down the Louisville matchup from the Louisville perspective. I know we've done a ton of pre-Louisville stuff. I think – or Louisville, I got the, I get all this. I, you know, I'm gonna pronounce it how, how I pronounce We've it. We've had a lot of comments in the, in the, you know, the section. The, we've had a lot of things in the comments section. I should say, I, I posted that clip yesterday. A lot of people confirming what Mike and I said the other day. It's, it's pronounced Louisville. So listen, we're gonna take over that city. I know people are already up there. Miami Canes fans taking over. We got a lot of Cubans up there already taking over that. There's a lot of Cubans in Louisville apparently, but we got a lot of people coming up. And of course, the football program is going to be taking over that stadium starting noon tomorrow. So they don't get any respect. Their pronunciation is disregarded on the Canes Insight Daily podcast, at least by me. There we go. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, what, what, what what's is going that? on there? Is that on purpose? I, I don't know what that is. That just popped up out of nowhere. But, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, that's being disregarded on the Canes Insight Daily podcast, Louisville. So, you know, talking about the Louisville game, you'll give th their perspective on it. But really, as we boil it down, and we talked about it six ways from Sunday, can Miami's defense step up and change the narrative about what they are? Because right now they're being viewed as an average defense that struggles with explosive plays. That's what the stats say. They're actually above average in several categories, but because of the explosive play problem, they're dragged down to average. I think the SB+, Plus, which is an analytic that involves strength the schedule, put puts defenses in context of the teams they're playing, had us about 32nd in the nation. That's pretty much what we are, which from a power five standpoint, our four standpoint, that's not average. So Miami needs to show that they can, number one, limit the explosive plays, a category where they're below average, and then just overall be above average defense, which doesn't mean shut outs every week in modern college football. If you can get the ball back to this offense with the way they're scoring, this is going to end with the special teams being as good as it is. This is a team that should continue – to, to win, win games at the pace they're winning. winning. Um, but the, the defense, defense is really what's on the spot, which makes to me makes this a perfect opponent, not for our heart rate, because it's going to be a, a game that we're nervous about, but to prove where this defense is. And early stops to me is key. Yeah, I've said it a couple times this week. You got you got to be able to play from ahead a little bit here. We've, we've talked a lot about the run game and still averaging over six yards a carry. But for them to really – utilize that run game effectively i think they've got to be able to get get up by a couple scores in 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 a game like this right because like you said in today's modern college football it's not like you're going to be pitching shutouts or holding teams to 10 14 points that's unrealistic to think it, it really is the way that a number of reasons the way the offenses are the parity and the talent levels there's a lot of talent on on this louisville team but Again, if you can if you can get ahead early and let Miami's offense play with a little confidence, not that they haven't already, right? But if they can really get ahead and, and be able to put the foot on the gas pedal, like we saw in that in that Florida game, right? I think it changes the dynamic of of how this uh, game goes. And let's talk about our, who we expect to be the player of the game. We always have the Beacon Adjusters player of the game projected by us, and then who it actually is after the game. Um, hopefully, it's the same because that would mean that we're we're defenses. 
the defense is cooking because I know we both have picks on the defensive end. First, we we'll want to talk about Beacon Adjusters. If your property's been affected by Hurricane Helene, Hurricane Milton, Beacon Adjusters Group is here to help with years of experience handling storm-related damage. We work tirelessly to ensure you get the compensation you deserve. From assessment to settlement, our team of trusted experts will guide you every step of the way. Don't face the aftermath alone. Let Beacon Adjusters Group restore your peace of mind. Call us today. That's one 254 249 or seven. All right, so the Beacon Adjusters player of the game, Pete. So for me, I'm going with a Tyler Barron here on the defensive end. A couple of reasons. One, he had a great start to the season, been a little quiet the last couple of weeks, but he obviously had his short stint at Louisville. And not to get too much in the details, but from what we understand, I don't think he was too happy about his experience there, so to speak. So I think he's going to come into this game uh, with, with his, with his uh, pants on fire. And I think that – He's someone who you look at this Louisville offensive line, talking to Mark Ennis as as we'll get to later in the show here. That's a spot that they're that that they're concerned with, right? So I think his familiarity with with a lot of the players over there, and again, he's gonna go in there. There's gonna be a lot of stuff thrown at him, I'm sure, when he comes out of the, out of the tunnel. Not not literally thrown at him, but but figuratively. I think there's there's gonna be a lot of eyes on him for sure, and I just think he comes out here. And I'm going to go with a multi-sack performance and a, and a strip a strip sack. Like that. Look, I'm not going to stray too far. Just go to the other side. Ruben Bain, he's back. He's hungry. Um, really the same reasons you like Tyler Barron, aside from the motivation factor. Although his motivation is, just, is going to be just as strong, given he hasn't played and he really wants to show what he can do and why he's the best player, in my opinion, on the defensive end in the ACC. I, I believe he's the best defensive player in the conference, arguably the best in the entire nation with how he can dominate a game. He has to show that he's been out. So looking forward to him. And I think Trevante Sylvester, the back of left tackle, we talked about it, basketball player, tight end slash defensive end. He was 230 coming out of high school. Now he's up to like 280. Athletic, sure, long, yep. But power is going to be the question when you're 280 pounds. He's, he is lighter than Ruben Bain. Ruben is shorter, much more leverage and explosiveness, and just power coming at him. So is he going to be able to withstand the power of Ruben Bain? I am pretty sure he is not. Um, yes, you could put some extra guys in there to protect against Ruben Bain, but now you got to worry about your player, protect, projected player of the game, Tyler Barron, on the other side. Plus, you get those tight ends and pass protection. Now you're taking away a weapon that really killed Miami last year, which was the tight end. You look at that Louisville-Miami game last year, the tight end really was – what caused problems for the Miami Hurricanes? So now, if you're protecting to deal with Dane, to deal with Aaron, you're limiting the amount of guys going out on those routes. So these guys, both Dane and Aaron, impact the game so profoundly, and they can just take away a few drives here and there. You know, maybe a holy penalty kills a drive here, a sack or a tackle for loss kills a drive here. Um, you know, the max protect allows your cover guys to 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 cover up the receivers and you get another stop there. Those are three stops, Miami goes down and scores, that's the difference in the game. When you have an offense that's scoring pretty much at will, that's how you win games, turning touchdown drives to field goal drives, getting those stops, just blowing up a drive here, blowing up a drive there, and allowing the offense to create that spread. That's really how you win games with an offense that's this dominant. Yeah, agreed. And and look, I expect the, I expect the defense to come out uh, – prepared i expect them to be ready it's it's an explosive louisville offense but you give lance Gidry a week to prepare here and and i'm expecting to see some different things man i'm, I'm excited yeah look let's talk also about the game itself and watching it this is the first game i'm not attending personally because i will be at bodega in coral gables on miracle mile mexican food tacos tequila if you want that noon uh, noon tequila you want to be at the Hurricane Watch Party. But by the way, it is a family-friendly event. I'll be taking my kids. People have asked me on the text, can you take your family there? I'm going to take my family, so it is a family-friendly event. But if you want to pop the tequila and talk to girls, you could do that too at Bodega, at Miracle Mile. Um, again, this is the official watch party through Kane's Connection. My is official now. Collective, if you are a member, you get discounts, you get giveaways. You want to sign up there, join the cause. Be part of the reason why we had the players to blow out Louisville. Hurricane Watch Party, Kane's Connection at Bodega this Saturday, 12 to 4 p.m. and enjoy the win together. All right, D. So coming up next here on the Kane's Insight Podcast, Mark Ennis joins the show, and he's from 
939 the Ville. We had him on last year as well. Hopefully, different result this year as Miami dropped that game last year. But great job by Mark breaking down this matchup from the Louisville side. And we will see you guys next week. Go Canes. All right, Canes fans, very excited to be joined now by our guest today, Mark Ennis, host of The Drive on 939 The Ville, going behind enemy lines here as we do every week here on the Canes Insight Podcast. Mark was on last year as well. Miami, of course, lost a tough game there against Louisville, and it was, it was a battle back and forth, uh, you know, very offensive-minded game, so to speak. And, of course, Miami going to Louisville this weekend, Noon game, sellout. So excited to have you on, Mark. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm looking, I think a lot of folks really looking forward to this one. You know, Miami means a lot uh, to people here uh, for a lot of different reasons. So I think there's a lot of folks really excited about this one for sure. And and listen, we had a discussion on our show yesterday about the pronunciation of Louisville. You tell me if I'm you tell me if I'm on point with it uh, or not. At, at at any point here, if I mess it up, you you just jump in and, and let me. You're know. doing pretty good. I'm gonna give it to you, man. It it takes a minute. You're doing pretty good. I'm impressed. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of Canes fans going up there. Uh, great town up there to to go see a game. I, I was up there for the Sweet 16 years ago. Miami played yeah. Villanova in the Sweet 16 there, so that that was a fun trip. Uh, a lot of a lot of people we know are headed up there, so it should be a great atmosphere. Just want to set the table here for where where Louisville's at for this season. Obviously, four and two, and a couple tough losses, one score losses against quality ACC. Well, Notre Dame half ACC, right? Uh, but, <laughs> right. but we'll, we'll we'll call them ACC for the sake of for the sake of the show here. Uh, but coming into the season, what were the expectations from the fan base up there? And now that we're midway point through the year how would you kind of grade how things have gone thus far yeah I, I think it's been a real mixed bag uh I, I think you know there was some real hope and expectation that the passing game and quarterback play and wide receiver play would be a lot better than it was a year ago they kind of made do with Jack Plummer and and the passing offense and really wrote you know the offense was about the two running backs that, that played so well last year and they've gotten that you know, I think Tyler Shuck's been a real upgrade. Ja'Cory Brooks is, you know, he was added to the Blinikoff Award list. Uh, they've had some – the offense has looked uh, more explosive, but I would probably say a little bit less efficient than a year ago. Uh, I think the real disappointment's been on the defensive side. You know, they by the midway point of last year, they were a pretty, a pretty lockdown defense. And that has not really been the case at all uh, this year. It's been a real mess at times. Uh, the SMU game, kind of the peak of that, where you you know they were continually getting caught, getting guys on and off the field against a team that everybody knew was going to go fast. You know, surreal confusion uh, and that sort of thing settled down a little bit in in the win last week at Virginia, uh, and hopefully that's sort of you know getting them on kind of the right path. But it it's been a real mixed bag. Some things that you thought would be better, they are. Some things that you thought you'd be able to count on. Not not nearly as good, especially on the defensive side. And then you look at the last couple games for Miami, obviously pulling a couple out against Cal and that big huge comeback win, and then against Virginia Tech the week before that at home. It's a pivotal game for them, obviously, in the national picture. But for Louisville as well, comeback win last week against Virginia to avoid their third straight loss. What would you kind of say the I don't want to say the morale of the team is right now but the mindset of the team heading in this into this one they have to know that this is a, a make or break situation if they want to stay alive in the ACC yeah I thought the, like the mindset really I was really worried I mean as much as like halfway through the Virginia game I think you know what it looks like when you're watching a team and they just look kind of flat you know emotionally and that was never an issue last year and this year's team I think it took them a while but something happened you know, in the Virginia game in the second half that it seemed to really wake everyone up. And I really kind of liked what I saw from them uh, down the stretch in that game, including driving the length of the field to take the lead uh, in that game late. But, I, you know, Miami means a lot to everybody up here. Like I was saying in the beginning, Howard Schnellenberger is, you know, shared uh, loyalty to him. His name is on the facility here, too. Uh, and and Louisville's entire football history is tied up with various tangles with Miami or kids from the Miami area. Louisville's going to honor Teddy Bridgewater this weekend uh, while he's up here. No, su no surprise they're doing no, that this weekend, course, I'm sure. Of course, strategically. <laughs> no, exactly. 
So, like, this game just means a lot. Miami's been a measuring stick for Louisville over going on two decades now, going back to that that Week Night 04 game that was so good for you guys at the end. Devin Hester, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Devin Hester. It's a curse up here. It's a blessing down there. <laughs> but, like, the game just means a lot to people, and, and Jeff has a history, you know, as a coach of getting teams – up for the big game it's it's sort of the one after it that's always kind of a problem so i suspect look it's a sellout it's going to be crazy in there i think he'll have them up i think you know miami's no reason they shouldn't be favored and there's no reason they can't win uh, i i think louisville probably going to be up and, and going to make them at least earn it this week for sure well listen canes fans are canes fans are weary this one we'll get into the the defensive side of the ball for miami but giving up a lot of big plays and louisville does have a lot of explosive playmakers so at the quarterback position, you mentioned Tyler Shuck. A lot of familiarity there. Of course, Mario Cristobal knows him well from, yeah. from Oregon. And there's been some you know, respect shown. Mar Mario has a lot of respect for, for Tyler, as he said in, in, in his press conference earlier this week. But you mentioned the expectation was the passing game would, would take a leap. And by the numbers, he's, he's looked pretty good this year. 14 touchdowns, three interceptions, 63% completion percentage. H how would you grade the passing game to this point? I think the part that, that is him throwing the ball and the wide receivers and tight ends has been excellent. It's been an A. I think the only the real issue with the passing game has been pass protection. And that that has been a problem. I think Louisville's really susceptible at the two tackle spots. You know, the injuries have forced them, I think, to go with some guys that they probably would, would have in reserve if they had their way. Uh, so I think as long as they can protect Tyler Shuck, he has really shown he has excellent touch. He's a good decision maker. Really, all three of his interceptions were sort of just, oh, screw it. You know, it's fourth down kinds of, you know, they haven't, I don't know that there's really been one where you're just like, wow, he didn't know what he was looking at there. I mean, he's really taken good care of the ball, right. you know, but that's that's what they hoped he would be. I mean, his whole the only real knock on him his whole career has been injuries and, and he's been able to stay upright. They don't run him if they can really help it uh, at all, even though he is fairly mobile. This is a, a matchup of two guys who really are are pretty mobile, but really, I think, prefer to just throw it both of them. And, and he's yeah, he's been yeah. that. So I think on the passing side. Uh, Ja'Cory Brooks, is uh, the transfer fin from Alabama, has been spectacular. Uh, Colin Lacey, that's probably the biggest bummer of the year. He comes in from South Alabama. They've got visions of him being kind of a Rondale Moore guy in this offense. And, uh, and then he breaks his collarbone in the preseason, and he's only been available for two games. So they're still, I think, working out where he fits. Uh, but tight end, a lot better than it was a year ago with Jamari Johnson and, and, uh, and Mark Redman. They were not really not factors in the passing offense at all. So passing wise, I think as long as they can protect him, there's probably going to be some throws there for him. Yeah. And the tight ends really hurt Miami in this matchup last year. A lot of, yep. a lot of big third down conversions really, really broke Miami's back at times last year. And yep. listen, I, that's a matchup I'm looking forward to in terms of Braum brothers, their offense, Lance Gidry. They seem to have his, his number Miami's defensive coordinator, uh, last year, but of course Miami coming off the bye, so we'll see these sort of yeah. adjustments that are made. Let's talk about the running game a little bit, man, because uh, we talk about these these South Florida ties and, oh, yeah. and Louisville. Isaac Brown, man, I mean, he's a guy who you could say Miami kind of overlooked him coming from Homestead down <laughs> sure. here, and man, has he been spectacular? Was he was was that the expectation? Did you guys kind of hear that in camp that he was that he was flashing, or has he just taken the reins now that he's gotten the opportunity? Yeah, we were. And it's fun because I think, you know, once you get to know a coach and get to know him well, you know what it sounds like when they think they've got something they kind of don't want to they don't want to give it away too much, but they want you to know, like, hey, be looking for this. And that is exactly how he was talking about Isaac Brown. He was very, very early on. You know, Maurice Turner has been hurt for a lot of the year, but he was very experienced. And Donald Cheney came up here from Miami, very experienced. And the feeling was, I think those guys were going to get the bulk of the carries. And then by the end of fall camp, it was, we were talking about Kewan Brown, Isaac Brown, Isaac Watson, uh, three freshmen or redshirt freshmen running backs. And, and Isaac Brown in particular, he has been a real revelation, just a awfully fast, uh, gets up to full speed very quickly. And he kind of does runs through a lot of tackles where I think he's on the defender before they're ready. You know, I don't know that he's like an overpowering guy, but just sort of all, like all of a sudden you're taking a bad angle and he's by you. So he's been a big play guy. Uh, and I would say Louisville's offense really has been a 
big play kind of fits and starts like they they're not very good at muscling anybody on third and fourth and one you know the third and two uh they've got to be tricky you know a little bit but big plays kind of are just below the surface a lot and, and he's been one of the biggest parts of that as a running back for sure Canes fans, Peter Ariz here. Wanted to tell you about our friends at Asset Dash, the best portfolio tracker and rewards program in crypto. You see the website right here, assetdash.com. You can scan the QR code to download Asset Dash. And Asset Dash is the best place to track all your investments, earn rewards, and now buy over 1,000 different cryptocurrencies on Solana natively through the app. You earn additional coins when buying through the app. Download Asset Dash for all of your portfolio tracking needs, crypto, NFTs, stocks. If you invest in something, Asset Dash supports it. Enter the code CANES, all caps, at sign up to receive an upgraded premium Asset Dash gold membership free for life. This is a limited time offer only. Again, CANES, all caps, at sign up. If you invest in something, Asset Dash supports it. Yeah, and and you said the speed, man. I think there was kind of an assumption from people who watch him down here that he was only a speed guy, but he's well built. He's breaking yeah. tackles. I mean, he's I mean, what a averaging eight point seven yards a carry, something like that. So yeah. big plays, man. I think for both sides, right? Because you mentioned the the Louisville defense has been has had their has had their bumps Rough. in the road as well. Yeah, yeah. So so let's let let's talk about it because for Miami, it's been the explosive plays, right? I mean, they've 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 done well in a lot of categories, but giving up a, a lot of 40 plus yard plays, which obviously you can have a great defensive showing and then you give up those big plays. It really doesn't matter. So defensively for the Cardinals, what has been the issue? So to speak, it's really been a little bit of everything. Uh, and it's, it's really, I'll just be completely straightforward with you. It's pretty hard to pinpoint exactly where they're going wrong. Uh, but mobile quarterbacks have crushed them this year. All of them. Haynes King, Huff from Jacksonville State, uh, Jennings at SMU, uh, yeah, Calandria last week. They have all really just eaten Louisville up. And, uh, you know, I think Louisville has got Stanquan Clark at one linebacker spot. But the other spot has been kind of a, a rotating cast of guys. None of them uh, otherworldly. And it's really been kind of a mismatch. And then it's been a little bit of a... Um, almost like they're too smart by half. Uh, you, you look a, a ton of substituting. They really like their depth up front, and they like their depth in the secondary, but almost too much to where it felt like guys weren't really getting uh, kind of in the rhythm of the game. You were just constantly moving guys in and out and uh, real confusion about responsibilities and such. And it, it all really came to a head in that SMU game where you had, you know, uh, third and one, and you get a like a 60-yard quarterback st- draw you know that's like a basic play for a touchdown and stuff like that and that's been kind of repetitive they did a, a much better job making virginia be down in down out not giving away these big things not having big busts ron english moved down to the field so uh you know i would i'd be stunned knowing you know what miami does and what cam ward's good at if there isn't a, a healthy dose of of him running the ball uh and and them going perhaps 15, 20% faster than usual. You'd really be fools not to do it because Louisville struggled with tempo, struggle with mobile quarterbacks, and Miami is certainly capable of doing both of those things. Listen, man, you if you, if you flip this and said Miami, this was Miami you were talking about, I think Canes fans <laughs> would agree with you because Miami's had it, not necessarily the the mobile quarterbacks. Kyron Drones did, did a really good job against them. And they they held Byron Brown from USF in check, but again, man, these these big plays that they've given up have been have been an issue. Let's look at some bright spots. Obviously, Ashton Gelati, yeah. pass rusher. He hasn't had the production that he had the last couple seasons, but he's another South Florida guy, Palm Beach. Uh, talk about some of the standouts on the defensive side of the ball that uh, that you expect to be, be impact players this weekend. Yeah, they need a big game from him, and he started to show a little bit. Like I was saying, I think he's one of those guys that was – needed to be out there more. Like, don't worry about him getting tired. Let him get out there and kind of get into the feel of the game. And I thought, like, midway through the second quarter, you kind of started to see some Virginia offensive linemen kind of getting stood up, and you could see, like, okay, he's getting into it now, and I think he'll have a good game. Uh, it, at the other middle linebacker spot, Stan Quan Clark, who you know uh, from down uh, in that area. Yeah, Miami uh, Central. Had, he has been as advertised. Uh, he is uh, stalwart. I mean, they really – he 
He never comes off the field pretty much. Uh, it has been excellent. And Quincy Riley is like their lockdown guy at corner. Been hurt. He missed two games, and they could have used him pretty badly against SMU and, uh, and Notre Dame, but came back last week, almost had a pick. He lets them, I think, be a little more aggressive up front. They're not generating great pass rush with just the down linemen at all. Uh, to the extent that maybe Tramel Logan as that other end who transferred here from USF, another uh, South Florida uh, guy. Another South Florida guy. What do you yeah. know? <laughs> uh, you know, somebody on that other side of Gelati uh, stepping up is probably pretty key for Louisville. But Quincy Riley being back at that one corner spot lets them, I think, be way more aggressive. Uh, pass rushing wise, they can blitz package because you can just let him play man and, and you, you think he can hold up. Although I'll say of all the passing offenses that Louisville played last year, the one that really got them the most was what Miami did a year ago. They, they, and I mean, it's they, funny. I, I I was not, not to cut you off, but I was looking at the stats from the game and Tyler Van Dyke, who was much maligned here at yeah. Miami threw for 496 yards in that game. So it was not, it was not even the offense who, most fans would say from last year was the issue. Now it's now it's been flipped a bit here as, as Miami's offense has been pretty potent. But yeah, I was I was noticing that as well. Yeah, it, it, last night last year's game. I don't know how you feel about it. It's very uh, peculiar because you know Louisville was a team that ran the ball uh, and used play action and they they were efficient. And then Louisville had a bunch of big plays throwing the ball, uh, and tight ends and Kevin Coleman who really didn't do much kind of all yeah. year. It was a it was a, an odd game and I you know. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we end up getting to the, the end of this one and whoever wins, we're talking about somebody that we didn't talk about hardly at all. Somebody like Kevin Coleman, you know, at the end of a game. So this is why they play him. It's going to be fun. It, and it's interesting because we, we were referencing last year's game, but there's so much different Com new quarterbacks from both, both sides. Isaac Arendo was, was Lou yeah. leading rusher and he's in the NFL now. So like you can, t it's same coaching staffs, but you can really, it's hard to it's really hard to look at last year as a barometer of what's going to happen this this week because there's there's so many differences on both sides in terms of personnel. Yeah, that I totally agree with you. I think this is kind of the challenge for all of us is trying to figure out what what really even carries over, you know, from a year ago and I, I think both teams are so uh pretty deft users of the portal to where like there yeah. really is a, a big difference in these teams. It's it's a brand new game. I don't I don't know how much carries over from last year at all. Now, just wrapping things up here, if you could give a couple keys, if Louisville's going to win this game, a couple keys for them um, to come out on top. Yeah, I think Louisville can't help. They just can't help Miami. They, they you know, uh, a good example, the Notre Dame game, you know, you fumble the ball. Tyler Shuck keeps it on an option, a, a read option, you know, gets like a about a 50 yard run, you know, on a drive where they would have taken the lead back 14-7, fumbles the ball, getting tackled from behind. They snap the ball over the punter's head and give Notre Dame the ball on the five-yard line. You know, in a game where they out they outgain Notre Dame two to one, uh, left that game really feeling like you helped them win that game. They can't do that. They can't do that in Miami uh, against Miami, and they've they've got to play the same kind of disciplined uh, assignment football that they played at Virginia. It wasn't locked down. It wasn't great, but they got the stops they needed. And they didn't give up any busts, you know. And I think if, if you get it, just make this a down in, down out game. I think you like your chances to at least be in it at the end if you can make it a game like that. But to the extent I think that either team helps the other one with turnovers, I know Miami's been generous uh, at times too. Yeah. You know, to the extent that either one of them helps the other, it could get away from them if they do that. So I think Louisville being disciplined smart you know knowing assignments not having bus and then not helping miami with its own mistakes I, I think you'd like your chances in that one and then last thing here we mentioned at the top the sellout how much this mean this this game has meant to louisville historically and they've played miami very well the last the last 15 20 years right so yeah. when, when you look at the expected crowd out there it's a noon game right so maybe a little maybe a little more dull than a normal night game, but how, how would you expect this crowd to come out uh, on Saturday? Oh, I think, I think you're going to get a, a tremendous crowd. Uh, it is a noon kickoff, but you know, things are changing. I think people are starting to realize that no, that doesn't mean what it used to mean. Uh, and Miami really does mean a lot up here. The, the Florida schools, Florida state of Miami in particular, less so uh, Florida uh, have always been, willing to play Louisville and have always been measuring sticks to one extent or the other. And, the, and a lot of Louisville's success has been based in finding kids in South Florida that Miami and Florida state didn't want, 
you know, and, and kind of using that against them uh, for you know, a lack of a better way really to say it. And for fans, they remember Howard. They remember that 04 game, but they also remember the 06 game, which was a you know a, kind of an announcement to everybody like, hey, this team is actually really good. And that team ended up, yeah. you know, winning the Orange Bowl that year. Uh, Louisville's first ACC win was against Miami. They also remember going down there and getting that shit kicked out of them uh, in the, under Satterfield. Like it's been a mixed bag of games, but Miami, I don't know how long it will last, but Miami has incredible juice in terms like it still means more than most wins to beat Miami it does it does and I don't think yeah. any little fan would, would ever pretend otherwise man I, I I've been seeing a lot of stuff there's a huge growing Cuban population up there in in Louisville and obviously a lot of Cubans down here in Miami myself included do, have you ever ventured to the Cuban spots up there or, or no oh I, I do and every time there's a new one I welcome it I grew up in Tampa okay. so uh, like there's nothing I miss more. when my mother flies up here to visit me. She brings a Cuban sandwich. Like I, like I, these are my people. So I hear you. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> no, I, when, when my, my, Miami was uh, obviously up at USF uh, a few weeks back. I was up at that game and the great debate always rages the best Cuban sandwich. I, we're not going to get into that now. We, we're not going to, we're not going to upset the Miami fans now, but it, it is nice that you have the, the background there. So you understand, oh, yeah. but Mark Ennis, man, appreciate your time today. Great stuff as always and excited for the game this weekend. Thanks, man. Anytime, anytime. Yeah, this is insight to the Canes. And you know we ain't playing no games. Joaquin said dominate, so that's what we do. Home of the legends and seventh floor crew. Down in Miami where hurricanes brew. You here for the rumors, we bring you the news. Cause it's all about the you. And nobody do it like Kane's in sight. 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 It's Kane's in sight.